Good afternoon. Good morning. I would like to thank you all for joining in today's presentation on PowerPoint 2010. The session will be facilitated today by Tabani, and I'm just going to go through a few of the introductory slides for you. All righty. Greetings to you all. My name is Tabani. I'm just sharing my screen here. Give me a second. My name is Tabani, and I will be your host for this uh, webinar, which is PowerPoint Tips and Tricks. Just a little bit about uh, Tabani. I am a trainer here at uh, CTC Train Canada and uh, I've been training for the last uh, three years. Uh, my background is in uh, engineering. So a lot of the times I uh, get to rub shoulders with clients, with teams, and communication is very, very important. So um, PowerPoint is one of those important uh, tools that we have to actually aid in communicating uh, what we, we want uh, to be, deliv to be uh, delivered across to uh, our clients. I'm looking at uh, my presentation here, and it says database. So I ran databases earlier on with this uh, slideshow, but it is PowerPoint today that we'll be doing, and it is uh, 2010. Just uh, tips and tricks uh, that you will find handy in preparing your presentations for clients. Uh, always very important. Uh, who is the audience? So we will be covering some of those uh, tick. Uh, tricks and tips that will help us out uh, as we brainstorm on what type of a PowerPoint presentation we want to have. Okay, so uh, the session will be um, 45 minutes long and uh, I will go ahead and cover a couple of points here. Uh, obviously, it will not be all of PowerPoint 2010, but just um, what I uh, deem as important uh, throughout my uh, training um, I've, I've seen a lot of things happening out in the field, happening a lot with people's PowerPoints, and I will be sharing um, what I feel would be important and will aid in having you uh, complete your PowerPoint presentations quickly and with a smile on your face, as opposed to, I hate computers, right? Okay, so um, we will be covering these uh, four points. How to start PowerPoint quickly. Uh, organizing slides at a glance how to um, uh, how the outline tab helps us out we will take a look at that some of us might be going outline tab i wonder what that is um, getting that slide looking just right we will be uh, taking a look at that as well okay so we'll jump straight into it straight into powerpoint here and what i will do um, i will kind of um, as, as i'll be talking about this i will um, be jumping over from maybe let's say the first uh, box that you have over there maybe to the to the third one but definitely all boxes will be covered it's just that some of the uh, the information that I have uh, will flow a little better um, as uh, we maybe move from the first one to the fourth one and stuff like that so you will see what I'm or what I'm referring to as we go along okay all right so we'll start off with um, how to start uh, PowerPoint quickly. So as most of you know, um, if you are already using PowerPoint or any application um, at your desk, what people love to do is obviously have it quickly accessible by having it in the start menu. So there's my start menu, I pulled it up, and right now I do not have PowerPoint there. So someone might be saying, well, Tabani, I always have PowerPoint there. It uh, never goes off because I use it all the time. So there's a very big difference between recently used application and applications that you have actually set on your desktop or on your start menu rather, okay? So these that you see here, some are default, but some will be recently used applications. So if you're the type of person who uses, I don't know, maybe Word a lot. So you get into your office, you sit at your desk, and you use Word, you open up Word. It's a recently opened application, so it, so it will show up on your start menu. However, when it is not a recently used application or you want to have it on your start menu permanently, how do you do that? You go over to your program, all programs, and then of course your program. And by the way, this is applicable to any <clears throat> uh, Microsoft application that you see listed here. So then when I get to my PowerPoint, I will then right click my PowerPoint, and then I can pin to start menu. So if I pin to start menu, what that means is now anytime I press my start menu or click my start uh, icon there in my taskbar, I get my Microsoft PowerPoint 2010 icon showing up there. 
Now, Tabani, how do I know that's not a recently used application? Because there's a thin gray line in between getting started and Microsoft PowerPoint 2010. So that line shows me what is what has been pinned to the start menu and what has been what, what is a recently used application. Okay, so that is that that has been pinned to the start menu. Is that the only way uh, that I can access uh, PowerPoint quickly? No, it is not. So as you know, I could have it as an icon on my desktop. We have quite a bit of icons, quite a number of icons there. We have uh, just the computer, we have uh, recycle bin, we have the Adobe Reader, we have course evaluation. How do I know when something is on here that it's an actual shortcut or it is an actual icon? That little blue arrow that is there. This shows me that is it, this is a shortcut. So if I were to delete this icon, I'm not deleting the actual program, I am deleting the shortcut. So how do we put our PowerPoint on the desktop? All programs, Microsoft Office, this is where it's located. PowerPoint, so what I'll do, right click my PowerPoint and send to desktop. Create a shortcut in brackets there. Okay, so now I have my PowerPoint icon showing up there and it has that arrow showing me that it is a shortcut. Okay, so now two methods. First of all, we uh, put that on the start menu, the icon on the start menu, we pinned it to the start menu, and then we have the uh, PowerPoint icon on the desktop, it is a shortcut. Okay, as if that's not enough. Microsoft says, well, you know what, Tabani, we'll give you one more for the road. Okay, so what the other thing I can do to make it accessible quickly is to pin it to my taskbar. So right now I've used start menu. Start menu, I think is obvious. We know which one the start menu is. I press the window sign in my start menu. I know which one my desktop is. So when it creates a shortcut for me, it goes on my desktop. That shortcut appears with the blue arrow on it. So I know it's a shortcut. Now, uh, which one is the, 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 task, um, the task bar? Okay, so let's see if I do this. Microsoft uh, Office, open that up. Go to PowerPoint, right-click PowerPoint, pin to taskbar. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. Pin to taskbar. Where is the taskbar? It would be uh, pointless for me to pin it to the taskbar and not be able to find it afterwards, right? So it's very important to understand the terminology. No, um, okay, this is where the taskbar is located. This is my desktop and things like that. So if I pin to taskbar, I get an icon, a PowerPoint icon in the taskbar. Tabani, do you really have an icon there or is it because uh, you have the PowerPoint slide presentation open? Well, if I close it, do I want to save? Let's save and get rid of it. It is gone. So now I don't have the PowerPoint application open, but I do have my little icon there, the PowerPoint P in my taskbar. Why do I have it there? Because it has been pinned to the, the task uh, the taskbar. So I have this pinning to the start menu, pinning to the taskbar, and also creating a shortcut on the desktop. Okay. So anytime I get to my desk, it is so easy for me to just go ahead and start PowerPoint quickly, okay, which is what we will do. PowerPoint is up and running. This is my PowerPoint. Uh, we're all familiar with these placeholders, okay? So be very careful with the placeholders, okay? Um, I have um, the title placeholder. It says click to add title. I have the subtitle placeholder. This stuff comes in handy. Anytime, let's say maybe we go to the uh, the outline tab. Remember, in the outline, we are going to be talking about the outline tab. Which one is the outline tab? So I'm just going to cover it. Let's uh, kind of look at it. Uh, I give you a teaser, and then we'll get back to it. Okay. So if you go to the view tab in your ribbon, you have the different views that you have there. So you have the normal view, slide sorter, note, uh, reading, reading view, and so forth. So we will be looking at each one of those uh, different views. And then you have your outline tab there in that navigation area. So my slides all appear here. We probably have all seen that. If I click outline, this is my outline tab. Okay. So we do know we have those views where I can have the, the normal view. I have the slide sort of view, the notes page view. This is what allows me to print out notes as a presenter while I'm presenting my PowerPoint is playing behind me. I can see what's going on, but I know which slide is coming up next because I have my note page. So this is um, how I would view that. Uh, there's the reading view as well and so forth. Okay.
So let's uh, open up a, a presentation and then kind of get to play around with it, get our hands dirty a little bit um, with the presentation that I will be opening up. So I will open a random presentation here. Let's see which one am I going to go for. Let's go for everything for coffee. So here's the presentation that I've opened up with uh, 10 slides on it. So one tip for sure, just looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, there's not much of um, a relationship between each one of the slides. Uh, what I mean is that the themes are different with each slide, except these two, we have slide eight and slide nine. These two look like they're from, they're from the same family, so this is not bad. And the, um, the last slide there that I have, our outro, if that is what it is, and our intro, the cover slide. So these two are the same, but everything else just kind of looks like uh, all I did was go to a group of people and say, hey, give me one, one slide. Everyone contributes to this presentation and it looks like this. This would not be too pretty. So one of the things that I want us to be aware of is anytime we are preparing a presentation, always think of, number one, your audience. Number two, um, what's the subject matter? What am I talking about with this presentation? Do I want it to be this colorful? One other thing that I always add on to that list of um, who's the audience and um, what's the subject matter. The, the next thing I add, if you can, if it's a possibility for you, hey, take a look at the room where you'll be presenting this presentation. Is it a room that's um, all lit up? Is it a room that's kind of dark? and uh, maybe there's blinds closed and so forth. Maybe it is on a winter day, uh, winter evening or whatever, right? So always kind of look at the room as well. That does help because the moment you have a slide, like slide number two, which I saw earlier on here, and you're in a dark room, most likely everyone will start falling asleep, okay? So always just kind of look at the, uh, what's my room going to be looking like? Um, who am I presenting this to? What is the subject matter? Do I want it to be colorful? Do I want it to be catchy? Do I want it to be serious? Um, is this for a wedding? Is this PowerPoint presentation for a project proposal? So always think about things like that. Okay, so brainstorming is very, very important um, with our PowerPoint presentations. And it's very important for us to, to turn on the, um, the creative side of us where we say, okay, which color combinations work well here. If you look at this, I like the way uh, this person who created this uh, used a certain theme. Um, so now that I'm talking about themes, always choose your theme first. Kind of have an idea of what type of theme you will be working with. So where would I find themes, Tavani? In the design tab. So there's my design tab, and I have all these different themes. So I could go for that theme. Notice how my uh, cover slide has changed. I could go for that theme. So there's all these different themes that I could go with. So the reason why I did say it's very important for us to um, always have an idea of what theme we're going for and then get to prepare our presentation is something along these lines. Notice the theme that I have selected here. If I go to slide number two, Okay, so this actually worked out well, but sometimes what you will note is that because you've changed the theme, the positioning of your title will also change. So if I do something like that, change my theme, look at my title, target for Q3. Okay, let me change my theme again. I'll change it to maybe let's say this one. Change my theme, look at target for Q3, look at where it's placed. So this shows me clearly that based on the theme, my, um, my titles, my title placeholders will change. So you always want to choose your theme before you actually move on, okay? So I'm not too worried about things like color combinations and so forth. Um, those we can change later. The theme is what's important. So now that I have my theme, let's see, should I use this one? How are we looking down here?
Okay, maybe I'll stick to that one. Okay, so I'll use this theme. Um, so let me assume this is the theme that I've chosen for my presentation. So what I would do, it would be interesting to maybe rotate my title. So how am I rotating my title? Using the placeholder and using that green icon there, which allows me to rotate. And then I can align my title, everything for coffee, with my theme. So clearly here, with me doing this, if you were to see my presentation looking like this with my title heading there, you know that Tabani chose his theme first and then he added a title. Okay, so I really encourage you to to do it this way. Start with your theme and then you move on to your uh, to your title. Or rather just to the components of your slide. So look at this. I have um, quarter uh, quarterly uh, review Q3. Now, um, I did mention um, that what we have around my text there, those little icons there, this is what we call a placeholder. In uh, PowerPoint, everything that we put on the slide is on a um, is in a placeholder. So I always look at it like a like a notice board. Anything that is on a notice board is always pinned with a um, you know a pin. You, you you pin it onto the notice board. Hey, I'm selling my SUV uh, for going for this much. The specifications of my truck are blah 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 blah. Okay, hey. Um, I, I offer these types of services, tax season. I uh, am a tax agent. I will take care of your taxes, blah, blah, blah. Everything is pinned onto a notice board. So same principle in, Excel, in, in PowerPoint. Everything is pinned onto my slide. So this shows me, of course, the area of my slide. Anything overlapping outside of this area will not be seen in my presentation. So good practice is this. Notice how I have a placeholder overlapping another placeholder. Oh, wait, let me select quarterly. Uh, okay, uh, I wanna select, uh, it's so tough to actually kinda select um, the title that you want, unless you kinda go out of it. So good practice is always have your placeholders nice and snug around the contents of your, um, um, of your slide. So what I would do ideally here is I would do something like that. Okay, nice and snug around there. Okay, I don't need all this excess placeholder space. Oh, that's a little too much. There we go. Okay, and then this one, the Q is overlapping into that uh, title placeholder. Again, let's make it snug. Nice and snug around quarterly review, Q3. Go ahead and do that. Do that. Okay, so again, um, I might choose to rotate this or maybe place it somewhere there. Okay, um, a lot of the times when we work and we want this to be really precise, I'm really big about precision, what I would do is toggle on my grid lines. Where do I find my grid lines? In the View tab, in the Show group, Show Grid Lines. You have the option of showing grid lines or even showing a ruler if you wanted to. I know that zero mark is my center. So if I wanted to have uh, maybe different images here, different pictures on my, um, on my slide, I could use my grid lines as a reference point, okay? And again, I have this quarterly review Q3. I want to somehow move it, uh, and be very precise in my movements, and the mouse is just not doing it for me. Okay, how would I uh, work around that? I always encourage zooming it in. Okay, so I've zoomed it in, and now that it's zoomed in, I can use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move quarterly review three to the position that I want it to be in. Okay, now I can zoom out something like that, okay? So again, with my grid lines again, I could attach or rather insert pictures. So clip art, we've all probably used these before. So clip art for my coffee company. 
pull up uh, some clip art with maybe that uh, teacup. And there's that uh, coffee cup. And I will resize it again. Here's another tip. tip. Whenever you're resizing your placeholders, um, always use the, uh, the ones in the corners, the circles. Why am I doing that? Because it maintains the aspect ratio of the image. So right now at this point, there's my aspect ratio. My coffee cup does not look too long and distorted. It looks just right because I kept the aspect ratio um, of my image. Okay. Okay. So now again, me using that grid, I could use that grid to my advantage to align my coffee cups there. Okay, and the good thing about this is that you also have those little lines that show up to give you uh, a sense of where you are in terms of your alignment. Okay, so there's my coffee cup. I'm going to align it right there. And the last coffee cup for this example aligned right there. Okay, so I think this is not looking too bad. Maybe I'll just include one more here clearly i'm getting carried away there you go and then i'll toggle off my grid lines so now i don't have those grid lines and i get rid of my clip art pane on the right hand side and now i have my coffee cups showing up there and everything is aligned to the t so i am the perfectionist so this has worked out well for me. So I can do that and maybe uh, add a little more formatting. So um, on, my, on my presentation there, there is a slide that says, okay, so how do I make my presentation, my slide look just right? So we are just dealing with this one slide here. Now, looking at that, um, the components on my slide, Always keep in mind we have a contextual tab. Tavani, what is a contextual tab? I thought the tabs were these guys. Yes, they are. But a contextual tab, if let's say you select any illustration or anything that you have inserted, it could be smart art, it could be a chart, it could be um, a shape, any one of these components that you insert, because you've inserted them, you get what we call a contextual tab. So there's my contextual tab there showing up, picture tools. What does the picture tools tab allow me to do? It allows me to modify the picture. So now I can click my picture tools tab, modify my picture, maybe change the color of my cup because my company colors, my company logo is um, that uh, pink there, right? So I can change this one to pink, change maybe this one, to a different color. All I'm doing is kind of playing around with different um, colors. Why am I doing this? Because it's just one coffee cup uh, copied over and over and over again on my presentation. I don't want people to get bored. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of change the color of um, each one of those. So I've added a bit of uh, a twist to my um, icon. As I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, my icon distance from the uh, right border to the top border is not the same. So what you might want to do is move your icons up. Oh, look at that. I try and move it up. I can't move this one as well with it. Oh, okay, now I'm stuck. What do I do? So I would use my control key to select all the icons because I, all, I want them all to move together, okay? So if I were to click my arrow key, on my keyboard or use my mouse, I can move all my coffee cups together. How was I able to do that? By selecting them all together. And you know what, as if that's not enough, I can even group them together. How do I group? In the uh, contextual tab again, in the arrange group, I group my icons, group, look at that, now my icon, or rather my placeholder is no longer around each picture. The placeholder is now around all cups. Um, and I can even resize those. Again, I'm using my diagonal resize arrow. And this allows me to maintain the aspect ratio. So there it is. Now I have my coffee cup 
looking something like that uh, right at the corner of my my presentation so now it's looking like this not bad okay so again those are things that could take us forever but as we're doing you know the little small tips here and there where I can toggle on my grid line I can group my icons together I can resize my icons using the diagonal portion uh, portion the diagonal um, uh, shape of the placeholder so this definitely makes my life so much easier so don't forget as well uh, the theme choose the theme before because you don't run into things like this um, so again just to echo what I said earlier on make sure your placeholder is nice and snug around your your illustration or your text box or whatever it is that you've inserted because right now if I were to ask you the question what did I select did I select the title or did I select the text this is not too clear because my placeholder is not nice and snug around target for Q3. And look at this, I can't even select target for Q3. So I'm trying to select that, I can't. So you always want to make sure, get enough of the placeholder around your text. There it is. Now I can select my target. Or can't I? There it is, okay? So a little tricky there, again, because my placeholder was not sized correctly. So always make sure your placeholder, nice size, there it is, so I can easily move this around to wherever I want it to be located. Okay, then my target for Q3 and so forth. Okay, so let's move on. Um, this is a slideshow, uh, 10 slides long. One thing that helps me keep uh, my slide, my presentations organized is this. I make use of my sections. So right now I have just one section, which is the default section. What I do is I always create sections. How do I create a section? By right clicking in between the slide that you want the section to be in, add section. Okay, there's a section. I have one default section there and I have another section there. Scroll down, and let's just assume I'll have another section there. Maybe we'll call this section conclusion. Uh, Tabani, how do we call it conclusion when it says untitled section? Well, we can right click it and rename the section. We get this dialog box here called rename section, and I will name it conclusion. Okay, rename. Now the section is there, it has been renamed, it is conclusion. And I have this default section as well. So this one, the untitled, I will call this uh, body. So this is the body of my presentation. And then this one will be called introduction. Okay, so now those sections have been renamed. Now where does this come in handy? This comes in handy when I change my view. So look at the slide sort of view. So remember the uh, the PowerPoint uh, that I had, the PowerPoint uh, slide that I had for my outline. One of the points there was organizing my slides at a glance. So I can look at my slides. It wasn't as easy when I had this. Because again, I have so many slides going down here, right? I want to be able to create sections where I can kind of segment each of those slides based on what um, segment it is. As you use PowerPoint, you'll probably run into this. So I can just give you a teaser. I'll throw this out there. So imagine you are working for, I don't know which department, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say you're a project coordinator. You have a PowerPoint presentation of 50 slides. Out of those 50 slides, 10 are for the finance department, 12 are for the engineering department, 15 are for a different department. I have all these crews that I need to coordinate and I need to show this presentation. So, hey, team, this is the project that we will be working on. Uh, for the finance crew, they don't really need to, or they might not need to hear uh, what you're telling the engineering crew. So what I can do is then divide my presentation up into sections like I did here. This is only a 10 slide presentation, but picture that 50 slide presentation that you may have, okay? So I go into my slide sorter and I look at my 
views. I like, okay, so this is my introductory uh, section, this is my body, and so forth, or these could be departments. Now I can easily sort these out. If you notice, I have one, two, and three. These are all the same. So how about I have this one come first, this one come second. All I'm doing is dragging and dropping. This one come third. Okay, so I'm just doing this based on the theme. The theme looks the same, so I'm assuming the subject matter is the same. However, when you're looking at it, obviously you're looking at the titles and going, okay, I will probably talk about this, and then after talking about this, I will do this, 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 and so forth. And then I'll have maybe my tables and charts. All those will be in the same, uh, same section, one after the other. And then I will probably have this guy here come over here, and this one target for Q3 come over here because this looks like we're talking about Q3 right now. So we have performance sheet Q3, uh, uh, new initiators in Q3, and then target for Q3. Okay, so this slide sort of, you. oh, there's a Q4. What are you doing here? Come over here. So there it is. So maybe after Q3, I'll then talk about uh, Q4. And then key improvement errors, maybe this will be my conclusion. And now I have been able to sort my slide uh, show. Uh, just at a glance by changing the view. How did I change the view? By looking at my status bar at the bottom, right above my task bar, okay? Uh, alternative of getting there, we can change the view, normal, slide sorter, and so forth, okay? So there's the different views there. So now I've been able to sort these out just at a glance, okay? So um, <clears throat> another uh, cool t uh, tip that I find is using Format Painter. So I'm looking at my slideshow and I'm thinking, well, I'm not liking the fact that my um, my titles are all differently colored. So if I like this color, I'm thinking customers by age, this is a really cool color. So what I think I will do is I will select my title and then I wanna copy this same format over to a different heading. So what I would do is use my Format Painter icon in the clipboard group. So I would select what I want to format, or, there are, or rather I would select the format that um, I want to copy over to a different area, double click, and then I get a paintbrush. Notice how my icon has changed to a little uh, paintbrush there, similar to that yellow bristled paintbrush, and then go over to the slide that I want to change, and then go ahead and select that. Go over to the next slide, select that. So that is just applying the format that I had earlier on. Target for Q3, there it is. And then target Q4, I change this to that. Okay, so now I have some sort of uniformity in my presentations, I forgot that one, but uh, you get the, uh, the drift, right? So always keep in mind, um, uniformity is very important uh, for presentations. I want to be able to look at one presentation that you prepare and say, I think I know who did this. This is probably a presentation that was done by, let me randomly pick someone, by Brenda. So I think this presentation was done by Brenda. Brenda always has this nice uh, colorful feel to her presentations that she adds. And by looking at it, I can tell there's a bit of uniformity with uh, Brenda's presentation. So uniformity is very important. Now let's go to um, one other thing that I want to show you is our outline tab. How do I use my outline tab to my advantage? Notice how you have everything for coffee, customers, uh, customer ratings uh, for Q3 and so forth, right? So I have all these guys. What are these guys? So how do I get here? Outline tab. So these are my titles. For each slide, I have a title. Remember earlier on when we started a new presentation, we had, click here to add title. The moment you add a title, it shows up in the outline section, right? So right now there is no title there. So let me add a title and I will call this title uh, tips and tricks. So that is my title. And then I go over to my outline. Notice I have tips and tricks. So what if I had something else like uh, context 
individual tab and something else like uh, pinning to taskbar. Do I have these appearing in the outline? Yes, I do. But notice how they are at a different level in, in regards to them not being um, outdented or, or promoted to this. So this is a sub, sorry, this is a um, subheading of that heading or a bullet point within that particular title, okay, just like I have here. What if I were to add uh, bullets? What if I were to make this a bulleted list? I can see the bullets on the outline tab as well. Okay, so Tavani, how can we use this to our advantage? This is really um, a neat trick. Um, anytime you do get that request. So maybe in the office you are the creative one. You are the one who everyone goes to to actually create PowerPoint presentation. So what I'll do is I'll say, hey, listen, um, so let me see, let me look for someone else here. I'll pick on someone. I will pick on Cindy. So Cindy says, hey, Tabani, can you create a PowerPoint presentation for me? I'll be like, yeah, sure, Cindy, I can do that. Do me a favor, Cindy, though, before you actually send me the documentation on that PowerPoint presentation, can you outline for me what you want me to have? So this is what I'll ask Cindy to do. Notice how I went to Word. So this is now Microsoft Word. I, this could be your email, okay? So Cindy sends me an outline that looks like that. Everything for coffee. Expectations from customers, um, value adds for customers, and so forth. So Cindy um, sends this to me. All I'll do is copy-paste. Copy-paste that into my PowerPoint outline. Okay, so obviously that's an old document. I will open up a new presentation. This is my new presentation. And let's hide this. Make sure it's not in the way. So this is my new presentation. I'll go to my outline tab. And then for my outline tab, I will then paste everything that uh, Cindy sent to me. So notice right now the way it actually is appearing is as though everything is actually a title. Okay, so that's not what I want. The moment you enter, that becomes the title on the next slide. But what if I wanted to have expectations from customers and then these would be my bullet points? How do I change that? You want to demote. So I will demote that and notice how I have all the bullet points listed there as though it's all under recommendations for study on customers' uh, preferences. And this is not what I wanted. I want this to be the heading. So what do I do? I need to promote it. So I'll promote that heading. Everything else is now under that heading. Let's go to uh, which one? Um, I don't know, maybe keep store clean. Okay, so keep store clean, that is going to be a heading. How do I make it a heading? By promoting it. Notice that is now the heading for my slide four. This is my heading for my slide three and so forth. All I did was take what Cindy sent me and all I'm doing here is just making my life easy with tips and tricks. Right click. Promote, Games, Rack, and then the last slide maybe is that one. Uh, what will I do? Oops. My mouse is getting excited there. Okay, so I will promote this. Notice how I have all the different headings. So from this, then I can then move on to my actual slideshow presentation and go, okay, now let me modify this. How many minutes do we have? We have three minutes. I think I can show you something fast. So look at this. I look at this uh, slide, slide number three, expectations from customers. This is really cool. And what I'll do is bullet points, yeah, but bullet points are a thing of the past. I've attended the, uh, the tips and tricks webinar, so I want to use smart art graphics. So I'll convert this to smart art. What is SmartArt? Uh, I don't have the time to explain all that. I will show you how it works. 
Okay, so uh, these are the three bullet points that I want to create and convert into smart art graphics. There's my convert to smart art graphics. If you don't like this, well, you have it as well in the insert tab, insert an illustration, what type of illustration, smart art. Okay, so I will go ahead and convert to smart art graphics and then I can choose which one I want. Uh, hover my mouse over that. Okay, that's what it gives me. Uh, no, not that one because that's a hierarchical list. That's not what I want. Uh, you know what? I don't like these. So you know what? You can go to more smart art graphics. Click that. This is actually a list, right? So this is a list, list of expectations. So I'm going to go over to my list um, area there and pick whichever one. So I could be this one. Hmm, let's see how this will appear. Okay, not quite. Can I change this to something else? Yes, you can always change your layout. So let's go really simple because of time. Where is that? So with my list, I can't find it. I'm just going to go, go to more layouts list, pick a basic list. So there's my list. <clears throat> so all I did was take text that looked so boring, like this one, and I converted it to smart art graphics. Now it looks something like this. Okay, so feel um, at liberty to actually change the format of some of those guys there. Why not? I can change that to this, depending on my company colors too, right? So I can change it to something that looks like that. All right, and with my PowerPoint presentation, I can even add animations to this. Not going to get into depth here. You can change your animations and have something that looks like that. Let's go for a preview, okay? So there's so many different things that you could do. Um, you know, change the duration of your animation. This is how I want it to be. Um, so something like that. So all I did was just take an ordinary list that uh, Cindy sent me uh, by email because she's not uh, the best at PowerPoint. She said, hey, Tabani, can you please do this for me? So all I did was take that outline, put it in my outline tab, um, understand the differences between promoting and demoting. It works the very same way as, as multi-level bulleting in Word. So as long as I understand that concept, if I promote it, um, that means it becomes the title. If I demote it, it becomes a subtitle or um, a subcategory of that particular um, group that I have, okay? So that being said, now I can take a deep breath. So uh, we are at uh, 1245. Uh, that is um, our little sh short, quick tips on PowerPoint. I was able to show, uh, share just a couple with you. Um, I hope you will be able to, um, to get into PowerPoint, to use it, uh, make your PowerPoint presentations look pretty. Don't make them look too boring. But again, always pay attention to your audience. Maybe your audience does want more of a serious look. Uh, go ahead, spruce it up um, using some of the, trips, the, 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 the tricks and tips that I showed you. All right. Uh, do we have any questions? I am one minute over, but if you do have a question, uh, feel free to go ahead and shoot that. Um, go ahead and uh, include that in the chat area there. Otherwise, if you don't have any questions, um, it was uh, nice and short, quick. Um, I hope you will use the stuff. Thank you all.